You're listening to the Meaningful Minutes with Nikki Olson podcast. This is a show for busy Latter-day Saint women who want to learn simple tools to feel confident and inspired in 10 minutes or less. Welcome. On this episode, we will take a look at depression and anxiety through the lens of the gospel. Now, just a warning as we dive into specific diagnoses and talking about them, this episode and all the future episodes we're talking about this are not considered therapy and are just informational. So if you feel like you need help and support with anything I talk about in these episodes, please reach out and get the help and support that you need. All right, let's dive into looking at depression and anxiety through the lens of the gospel. In my therapy practice and in my coaching business, I use a modality called mind-body bridging. One of the things I love teaching, um, love about teaching these skills from this modality is how seamlessly it translates into gospel terms. So today I want to show you how I use the terms in this modality to explain symptoms of depression and anxiety. One of the main factors that sets this modality apart from others that are used in the mental health field is that the reason we experience internal turmoil is because there's a system inside of you and everyone else that causes that turmoil to occur. So when this system is turned on, it can cause havoc physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and socially. When it's active inside of you, it can cause you to feel physical tension in your body. Feelings of shame and guilt, uh, a distance from God, and affect your brain from functioning optimally and keep you from communicating well with others or even wanting to communicate at all. Now, spiritually speaking, this system inside of you is called the natural man. We all have the natural man inside of us. And no one is exempt from this phenomenon. And there isn't anything wrong with you because you experience this system. If I had to write a job description for the natural man, it's going to sound something like this. The natural man advocates for practices opposing God. It works to convince you that you're broken. It approaches situations with perfect ideal requirements. It collaborates with Satan on everything. It plays a key part in creating agency in everyone. It fosters a place for internal chaos to occur. It reviews failures and shortcomings frequently. It discovers insurmountable ways to fix your life. It maintains regular spinning, cluttered thoughts, and body tension. So what do you think? Does that sound like a system you want to be operating inside of you frequently or for very long? I bet not. But one thing to remember that I see women doing frequently is that you can't change the natural man's job description. And you can't change how it operates. Trying to do that will cause even more turmoil in your life because you're opposing a natural phenomenon. What you want to focus on learning to do is put the natural man to sleep when it wakes up inside of you and understand what it is that wakes it up in the first place. And that's what I focus on when I teach mind body bridging skills. So let's dive a little further into how the natural man relates to depression and anxiety. Now, depression and anxiety can occur outside of the natural man when it's asleep and aren't necessarily always caused by the natural man. These diagnoses can occur genetically or because of experiences outside of your control, but the natural man will cause even more turmoil if it's activated and you have these diagnoses. Other times the natural man wakes up and you can experience some of the same symptoms of depression and anxiety. So let me show you how this works. So remember one of those job descriptions of the natural man is to convince you that you're broken. So this means that anytime the natural man is awake, 
you will be experiencing one of the types of thoughts we call in mind body bridging a depressor thought. These thoughts are just how they sound depressing. (laughs) They are not just negative thoughts, though. They're thoughts that create a floodgate of other negative thoughts to be released and eventually convince you that there's something seriously broken about you. Now, you're not broken because the natural man tells you that you are. You, of course, are not perfect and have room for growth and have weaknesses that need worked on, but that does not mean you are broken. I like to use the analogy of a garden to kind of illustrate this. If you plant a seed in a garden and it doesn't produce a ripe, juicy tomato right away, would you say the garden is broken and it needs fixing? No, (laughs) you would say that it needs time and nurturing of that seed and looking out for potential things that can get in the way of its growth, but you wouldn't say it's broken. You may have many seeds that are continually being planted inside of you that need time and nurturing to grow, but you are not broken. When the natural man is spitting out these depressor thoughts, such as you're a failure, you're a bad mom, you're a lost cause, you can start feeling symptoms of depression, like sadness, irritability, loss of energy, loss of desire, loss of hope feelings of worthlessness, and wanting to isolate. These are results of that system running a certain story in your mind and create an effect inside of you. Hence why we call it mind-body bridging. The natural man affects your mind and your body and essentially your spirit as well. So this is where depression symptoms can be manifest or depression diagnoses can be made worse. Now let's dive into how anxiety symptoms can come up with the natural man being active inside of you. So the second type of thought that the natural man creates is what mind body bridging calls a fixer thought. So if the natural man is sticking to its job description, which it always will, (laughs) and you're listening and believing the thoughts that it's pumping out, then you're going to feel pretty broken And when someone is broken or something in general is broken, what do you want to do to it? Fix it, right? So the next thing that the natural man starts to do to tell you to do is all the actions you need to take in order to fix how broken you are. The problem with this logic is you are taking action on something that isn't true in the first place. You aren't broken. You will then spend a lot of time taking action on things that never actually fix something that was never broken in the first place. So this can create feelings of overwhelm and stress, feelings of restlessness, feeling wound up or on edge, um, a difficulty concentrating, trouble sleeping, nervousness, sweating, nausea, and just basic muscle tension all over your body. The confusing part about fixer thoughts is they are sometimes good actions to take. But the problem is you're taking the actions for the wrong reasons. And you'll never feel satisfied with those actions. So then you'll experience another depressor thought, which will bring up another fixer thought. We call this the depressor fixer cycle. And this fuels the identity system into staying awake or the natural man. So you can imagine if you're in your natural man state and you get thrown back and forth between these two types of thoughts, that'd be pretty exhausting, right? So this is not a place you want to stay for very long or go very often. And this is why I'm so passionate about, a te- passionate about teaching these mind body bridging skills is to exit this cycle and return to your true divine self where you're connected to God and can receive what he wants you to receive. My self-paced video course called The Connection Course actually walks you through the four mental health skills of mind-body bridging in spiritual language. And I called it The Connection Course because the natural man is what disconnects you from your true divine self others, and really especially God. The tools you learn 
um, will show you how to reconnect to your true identity as a daughter of God. Connect back to God's power and connect with other people. If you want to learn these skills and be in a connected state with yourself, God, and others, there's a link in my show notes um, that you can access this course. And after you invest in the course, you're going to have immediate access to these skills. So, all right, I hope that was clarifying about how anxiety and depression can be seen through that lens of the gospel. And next week, I'm going to talk about trauma through the lens of the gospel. And this is going to dive more into why the natural man is waking up in the first place. So hopefully you're following along with a series about mental health through a spiritual lens. Um, be sure to hit follow so you can, you don't miss any of these episodes. And if it, this resonated with you and you feel like anybody else might benefit from this, please share this episode with them or tag me on social media so that I know that you have listened to the episode. All right. I will see you next week. I hope these minutes you spent with me were meaningful, helped you feel inspired and more confident. If you liked today's episode, check out the show notes for links to other episodes you might like too. And while you're there in my show notes, look for the links to my website, social media, and free handouts for remembering how to implement the skills. Thank you for listening to the Meaningful Minutes podcast with Nikki Olson.